Inside Hilltopper Athletics is brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. All right, welcome to Inside Hilltopper Athletics Track and Field Edition. I'm Jacob Davey, joined by head track and field coach Justin Simpson. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Big week ahead, yep. heading into conference uh, championships. Just how are you feeling overall so far? Yeah, really good. Uh, it's, uh, it's been nice this week. It's uh, pretty much spring, I guess, right? <laughs> so <laughs> we've actually, for us, it's super awkward. Like for us, we've been outside all week um, for every event, which – has never happened any time I've ever coached anywhere in February. Yeah. <laughs> so that's been super cool, um, being spread out and stuff. Um, and uh, But other than that, yeah, just uh, kind of like I said when we did the first one about the preview, yeah. you know, uh, our goal is always top three and our goal is to win. And um, we got a really good season and uh, we're, still, yeah. we're still on that. Let's just get into that season yep. so far. You have 25 school records either tied or broken across men's and women's uh, yep. track and field. So just – yeah. Um, Overall thoughts? Yeah, it's, it's one of those things we've been looking at for since I got here is um, I think I actually – I think I might have told you this in passing. Um, you know, my goal was to make sure, like, that every uh, indoor record and try to – outdoor record's a little bit tougher. We have a lot of them. But make sure every indoor record was uh, someone from a recruiting class of mine or in the last seven years yeah. of me being here. And um, we only have one to go. Women's 4x4, four four, so hopefully, on pace. hopefully this weekend that, that, that's gone. And then does literally, that have a shot to go down? It does, yes. So um, uh, so that's been super cool. And, uh, you know, it's obviously because uh, a lot of the work you do, um, you know, I, I, I want to give you as much credit as possible, hopefully for the rest of the year. Um, we've broken a lot of records in the, in the past. I, I've actually told some of the coaches this week, they've, they've come to me and said, man, you guys are – and I'm like, oh, we actually – truthfully, we, in indoor, we do this every year. Um, but the social media presence – which is, you know, I'm, I'm not really big on. Um, but the social media presence has been uh, so much better um, with everything that you've done. And uh, I put Coach Favo in charge of an Instagram that uh, I've never even been on. Uh, I've never been on Instagram in my life. So He does a good job tracking the meets. Yeah, so yeah, I've it. never even seen it. So, But just that sort of work. Um, I know a lot of the coaches here, and I've had GAs from Student Life and stuff talking to me sometimes, and uh, – be like, oh, man, I saw so-and-so. So, like, um, I think that, that presence has really helped um, put us in the spotlight more um, because we, we do do this a lot. You're not 25. You know, today's, <laughs> this year has been an exceptional year, um, which has been great. We thought we had this opportunity. Um, but I, I do. I think a lot of the work you do and the work that Coach Favo has done um, has just kind of spread it out to the masses more. Um, you know, we've had very good teams for years now. Um, but the 25 records, is, it's awesome. Um, it keeps you motivated during long seasons. You know, when you break one, you know, it just kind of uh, revives you as you're moving toward the championships. So uh, a lot of hard work by the team, um, a lot of hard work by uh, the staff, a lot of hard work by you, obviously, <laughs> um, just to make it all come together so everyone can see um, the finished product. Yeah, and then get into the conference championship this uh, weekend. Mm -hmm. Two days down in um, Huntington, hosted yeah. by Marshall, right? Yes. And men have a good shot. They're ranked yes. first in the conference TFRI yeah. rankings and yes. the women are top three as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's. I, I've I've always told people, you know, I was I was an athlete one time in my life, and uh, the reason I do this job is because I'm very competitive. Um, I always loved pressure. I was steered right into pressure. Um, and when you have usually in this job, um, when you start to feel pressure or uh, nerves, it usually means you're doing something right. It means uh, you're good, and it means you have an opportunity. Um, and that's where we're at. Um, we were very good last year. You know, our women had a shot to win, and it's, it's you know, Charleston wins every year. Um, actually, for the indoor championships, Charleston's never lost um, uh, with MEC Indoor. So uh, we're hoping we're that, we're that team this year. And uh, on the men's side, um, we just have a very, and I, and I said this in the preview, we just have a very complete team. Um, whether it's throws, distance, sprints, um, pole vault, we're just incredibly well-rounded. Um, we've been, for the most part, as, as, as the best you can, really, uh, very healthy through the whole indoor season. Uh, we've had a very mild winter, so it's been, again, easier for us, for us to go inside and outside to get work in, which is pretty rare for all the teams. Um, but we, we do have a shot, and I'll never steer away from that. I'm not, I would never sit here and, and just say, well, we're just going to go in one step. No, I want to win. Yeah. And they do have that opportunity, and they completely understand that. Um, and every meet we've gone to, they've shown – why they've been number one the entire indoor season. And I know Charleston wants something to say about that, uh, which is awesome. Uh, but we're going to do everything we can on Friday and Saturday uh, to host the first indoor 
track and field at West Liberty uh, Championship ever. Um, women, pretty much on this track last year. Um, we got second last year, um, indoor and outdoor. An ama amazing teams. Um, and uh, this year, we're, we've been ranked third all season. Uh, we do have an opportunity for second. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll see how that falls second day. But, you know, the second day, our goal is always to maintain our set of position on the podium for top three. And uh, so it's been nice for the both programs um, to talk all year just about, you know, that we have two programs that are um, top three. Um, a lot of teams just, you know, can never say that. So it's, it's, been, it's been fun. Yeah, so this is pretty much your first event as – accumulating team points right Correct. you've just been going competing individuals yes. trying to qualify for the performance list yep. so yep. what's that is there like a different mindset and training and stuff as a more team atmosphere or? yeah I mean I mean not really like in practice it's um obviously the, like the last 10 days or so we started to taper athletes off um you know we really don't we don't back off any of the meets mm -hmm. throughout this season um because we we're focused on this event and it's the same thing as outdoor once we start outdoor after this event's done um our training philosophies and our training regimens are set for May, right? So we don't go to meets and just completely back off anything to be fresh for a meet. Like, that's just – if you're going to do that, then you won't be great in May. Like, you just can't do it. So um, so we backed off some in the last 10 days. Like I said, the weather has helped spirits a lot um, as we get close to the championship, uh, as it always does. You know, How does that – very into the preparations for indoor, even yeah. practicing outdoor, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, especially, like, we've had throwers outside, which doesn't happen all winter. You know, yeah. again, more space, uh, more freedom there. And uh, for the track kids, you know, our, you know, we love our indoor track that we just have it, but it's 170 meters. It's hard as a rock. Um, you can get a lot of shin splints and different things indoor. And um, so going out on the big track, out on the soccer turf, um, for us injury-wise, or just uh, refreshing people's legs, uh, it helps out tremendously. And just for kids to spread out. And, and the big one where it helps is our jumps. Like, we can high jump inside, which is great, but we, you can't long jump and triple jump inside. You don't have pits. No pit, yep. So when you're working on your steps, when you're working on board work and you're working on sand stuff, like, you, you can, usually, and this is every team, you know, in the MEC, because none of them have indoor complexes that have right. pits, yeah. you don't get that work. So pretty much when you go to meets on the weekend for the jumpers, that's their work. Um, so for us, this weather changing coming into indoor, the jumpers have been outside multiple days a week on the runways, working on triple and long jump, which, um, again, is, is, is just rare. It's February. It should be well, 15 It's going to be back down in the 30s, but you'll be inside on Friday, right? Yeah, ex exactly. So if you have, for us, preparation-wise, it's been great. Um, and, and it's, again, it's, it's changed what we can do in, in practice, for sure. We'll start with the men's side, um, just some of the big – Point scores, uh, yeah. event-wise, you want to point out? Yep. So, really where, uh, I, like I said, we're very well-rounded, but a couple of the areas that uh, we're very good in is uh, that we have a lot of, like, you'll have events. Every, everyone has, the, the schools have one person in the top six, one, two people in the top eight, and those are your scores, right? Um, for us, long jump and uh, uh, high jump. Um, we have something like six in each of those okay. that are ranked in the top eight eight to ten so you're almost taking all of those if everything goes according to plan you're almost taking all of those point spreads or no other team is taking anything from those events right, right so it's the top 15 is that right top 16 go 16 top and every eight score okay so for example long jump and high jump we have like i'll just go long jump so we have the top three we have one two three right now now they have to compete there and you know we've jumped 2.01 meters 1.98 meters it's all irrelevant when you go to conference it's just what your place is mm -hmm. right um, we don't care about PRs and stuff at the conference championships. It's just what place were you because those are the points, right? Um, but when it comes to how much points you can score in events um, for, like, long jump and high jump purposes, we do have five to seven people in each of those events in the top ten, by far more than anybody else. Yeah. It's not even close. So even if you have a little bit of a mess up, this athlete messes up, let's say he's second ranked, well, it's just your guy <laughs> yeah, jumping. It's, it's your guy other, jumping yeah. him, right? So – those are two on the men's side that are, are very heavily pointed towards, towards us versus every other school, 100%. Um, an area we were lacking last year on the men's side when we got third um, was throws on the men's side to score throws because indoor you only have shot and weight. We have a great javelin core, but they don't get to do anything until the outdoor season starts. So Josh Fancher, Luis Martinez, um, two of the best shot putters in the conference. Luis Martinez is second right behind Charleston's number one. Fancher's right behind Luis. 
Um, Josh, very good in the, in the weight. John Brown, very good in the weight as well. So all of a sudden we found three guys that are at the top three to four that are scoring a lot of points where last year we had, we had none. Yeah. Um, so that, that when it comes to going, getting over the hump to try to win – you need to find, okay, last year, where were your biggest weaknesses? And ours was men's throws for indoor. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we found uh, some guys that immediately can make an impact and score at the collegiate level. And th- those guys are, uh, are, are there for us, which is a, a big help. You don't want an yeah. event where you can't score. You pretty much want to score in every, every Ex- event. You exactly. Can, yeah. Yeah. Um, Even the weak and ones. It's, and it's, pick it, up some and it's yeah. rare for, you know, for Luis and Josh's uh, sake, they're true freshmen. So. In college, our conference has gotten very good, so it's very rare to have freshmen, especially in the throwing events, because the weights um, change from high school to college for them. And uh, for them to be able to propel themselves as high as they have so quickly um, is very imp- impressive. You don't see freshmen at the top of the MECs in the throwing events. You know, it's juniors, seniors, fifth years. Right. Very experienced. Um, and then, uh, other than that, um, those, are, those are very good for us. And then um, just because they've pretty, they pretty much set every record at this point, you know, our distance <laughs> guys are, yeah, are right yeah. there. We're really having to pick and choose what they're going to do. We have a great DMR that we're going after Friday night. Um, you know, Dana Phillips um, in all of his events, I'm not going to – I don't know when this is going out, so I'm not going to say what, who's doing what because uh, that doesn't get announced <laughs> until tonight. Okay. Um, but, you know, all of those guys work so hard, and they've just – they've gotten so good, and they, they knew we had an opportunity this year. and. So Philip White, Brendan Sands, Michael Harriman, Tavian Richardson, Dana Phillips, um, just the backbone of that distance core for so many years. I mean, a lot of those guys are fourth, and more than half of those guys are fifth years that mm-hmm. only came back this year because of what was going to happen, and they, they understood what I was telling them and uh, came back in here to grad school um, to finish this thing out, and they're all performing at the, at, the, at the highest level that they can. And so it's important for me, you know, you never know what happens. Injuries happen. You know, life happens, right? Right. But for all of those, because you know, those distance runners are under my care the whole year, and uh, for all of those athletes that came back for an extra year to finish out um, their eligibility, to be seeing the success that they have right now, and, and I truly mean every one of them. It's not even like, oh, well, one is injured. Every one of them is, is running faster than they've ever run in their lives and uh, or have opportunity to win things this weekend. So it's really nice, those ones that have been with me this long, you know, almost as yeah, long seeing as the I've, hard work pay off. Yeah, I mean, almost yeah. as long as I've been here. So you really care about those athletes because they, these distance runners that are going to finish, they're uh, they were here when we were last in the conference in cross and track, you know, just at the bottom, and uh, to potentially win and see a full circle of that freshman class believing in what I was telling them, and then possibly winning and even having the opportunity to do so. Charleston is very hard to beat. Every team knows that, and uh, the fact that we have an opportunity and we're talking about it. I appreciate already um, because a lot of these athletes that are going to be leaving me after this year, they came, they came and, and they listened to me when, you know, we, they could have just looked at the results when I got here that first year and been like, well, you guys are last place in all of the track and cross things. Yeah. And I couldn't dispute that. Facts are facts. I had to, to sell them on what I think we could do. Um, and so to see them possibly go out on top like that, be pretty cool. Be pretty cool. It would be really cool. Um, I know you have some athletes that, compete in different events and you hold them like one weekend they'll compete in this and the other weekend they'll do that but yep. going into the conference championships how does that affect your yeah. planning do they compete in multiple or how does that work 100 percent. so um again that's that's mostly the distance runners yeah right so it is two days so a lot of it's it's split up pretty evenly for the sprinters prelims uh the throwers um it's mainly distance runners because a lot of a lot of my uh kids can do um, they could qualify in the 5K, the DMR, the 800, the mile, and the 3K. Well, <laughs> you can't run all those, right, in a weekend, can you? I guess you could. D3 does sometimes because, like, like the PSAC, I mean, the PAC, for example, at Bethany's at, they only have one day for their championships indoor, which is unreal. Like, <laughs> um, that's tough. I've never even heard of such a thing. That's tough. Um, and so for us, two days indoor, three days outdoor, um, you are, with the best athletes, like, you are selective. Someone like Dana, he could, he could, He's a top seven guy in 800 all the way up to 5K. Uh, what we do and all of us do in the conference that have strong distance programs, we have to be selective in what we think they can win and what is okay to hold them out, and that would still help the team. Mm-hmm. Um, so with my top guys and with, like, Hannah, there's they could qualify in all of them, um, but they will not run them all. 
Um, yeah. They they all know what they're running. Yeah. Um, and during the season, we talk about that when the season starts. Like, hey, we're going to run a lot of events, um, but these are these are the two or these are the three. These are the events you're going to okay. that we're focused on. Yeah. So um, when the uh, list come out tonight, you know there'll be events that like Dana's not on because we're trying to win some other events. So with distance, we are selective. Right. But with the other but the other ones, uh, no, they'll they'll do them all. They'll do it all. Yep. Yep. Then you want to talk about uh, the women's side come in ranked third yeah. in the conference. Yeah, um, the women. The women. Um, it's kind of like last year. Um, you know, I talked so much and so highly of the women's throwers last year because they've been our backbone for five, six years now. Right. You know, we just had such a strong uh, a group of women throwers, and uh, we lost Kelsey Hewlett, um, who's just throwing up at Grand Valley now. And uh, um, but we had so many still on the team, and we brought some girls in. And um, I, I truly still believe that they're still the backbone. Um, and scoring the most points uh, for the team. Um, that just doesn't go away uh, one year. We only had you know, one graduate in Kelsey last year with the whole rest of the team that was mm-hmm. all coming back. Um, so that's a very uh, strong point for us. Kennedy Martin's number one in shot, and uh, you know, she's looking to win that. And we, uh, Susan Johnson and Sydney Jeffries, uh, they're two and three in the, in the weight throw, and they could easily win it. Um, so – Hoping, hoping for those. Uh, and we have just a whole slew of scores after that, to be honest with you. So, like 12 of them. <laughs> uh, so I won't go through all of them. But those are kind of the three main ones that are, like, at the top right now. Right. Um, and then uh, our multis, our jumps, um, you know, our, our high jump, our long jump, and then our three-girl um, pentathletes um, are all in scoring positions. Um, and very good. And, uh, and then, of course, you have Hannah who's in pretty much all the distance events, <laughs> as always, doing her thing um, and scoring points. So, um, and then, and, and really, honestly, and you've had to write about it or put pictures up so many times, it isn't a crazy amount of points, but um, who's really stepped up this year um, is someone like Olivia Combs. Um, she was yeah. very good for yeah. us last year, right? She's a great athlete, very, a, a great person. Um, but she, as she's matured, she's really taken on a role for this team and, you know, she's the second best pole vaulter in the conference. Um, she gets, it seems like every week she gets better. She has, she, she went right. from, right. she tied it, broke it, and then broke and then her own. again. Um, and then her teammates, like Mac Ryan, she is, she is a pole vaulter. You know, like Olivia also is a scorer in the long jump and the triple jump. And so she's very versatile, which helps out. Mac has been with me through the thick and thin of, of the pole vault here and through multiple coaches and through highs and lows. Yeah. And, um, She's had a great beginning of the season, and I know she's going to be great this weekend. And uh, she's never been more confident. She's been never been more prepared. Um, Olivia Miller for us um, in pole vault. So um, it's just a very it's a very niche area pole vault is. Mm-hmm. A lot of the schools don't even do it. It's, it's too expensive. You can't yeah. find coaches. It's, yeah. it's really hard. It's really hard finding places to even practice. It's it takes a lot of my time. Like yeah, you season. talked about going all oh over. Oh my gosh, <laughs> getting them everywhere. Yeah, it's 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 tough. Um, so they've really stepped up in all the extra effort to, to get them to where they need to be, you know. And then I didn't mention them because they, they all travel together, Reese Burnside and Nate Lucas on the pole vault side for them. And, uh, you know, they obviously follow the women and where I, where I can send them and, and pay to pole vault places. And uh, mm-hmm. to see them uh, excel um, with the ex- that extra work to find the places has been, um, it's been really nice. Yeah. So what I'm getting is a pretty strong field team for both. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Yeah, very strong. Like um, high jump, long jump, triple. Um, it's it's very good. Um, Haley in the hurdles, Makai in the hurdles. Again, we could do the whole hour again. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Um, I, t- I told you no 45 minutes no, again. No, I know. Um, yeah, yeah, very good field. Um, like I said, on the guy's side, there's really all around. There's It's really right. hard to uh, – um, it's really easy on long jump and, and high jump because, like, it's very rare for any team to have six of the top nine. Yeah. Like, that's, that's special. Um, that gets you a lot of points. It does. Um, and for us, to combat Charleston is, again, on the distance side is they score so many points on the distance side. You know, they're very good, and uh, we have to negate a lot of those points. And uh, that's one thing I'm so proud of. A lot of my fifth years, they've stepped up in such a level to go at Charleston and – um, for this team, and uh, um, and and I said this in the preview, and it's it's true, and it's held true um, to the championship. Is they're just two very well rounded teams. I could mean you could have a whole other conversation of every single track team and what their strengths and weaknesses are. Yeah. And if you go in any of those, I could tell you like this team is very good at distance, and they have nothing else. This team is very good at sprints, and they have nothing else. 
almost all the other teams, that's the case, right? Very heavy pointed towards finances in this area. Mm -hmm. um, and where I think where you see like us in Charleston at the top is they're like us. They score everywhere. Yeah. Right. Um, two totally different schools, um, but very well-rounded programs so that you are, if you have a little mess up here, you, you have a universal scoring system where it's like, okay, every event, there's an opportunity. Like we don't have a weakness anywhere, mm -hmm. right? So the two top teams that are going to go at it on the men's side, that's the case. Like every event that steps up, every time one's done in the next one, you have scores in those events. And to win, especially nowadays, the way the conference has gone, you, you have to have it. Yep. You have to have those. So uh, every so, it, And it just makes every event's going to be very – Two straight days, every event's going to be very suspenseful for us. We're going to be counting points, you know. Yeah. Night one, I'll be sitting there looking at what we have versus <laughs> what we still have the day two. And, and uh, you said before we got on air, is it going to be a slugfest for two straight days? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. On the, yeah, on the men's side, it's, it's going to be, um, you know, could be one of those things that uh, comes down to the four by four on day two. What is the last event? Four by four. Is that it? Okay. Yeah. So if it comes down to that, I might have already passed out. You just if you watch the live feed, if you just see me lay on the ground, I'll just get up afterwards. But it's it's gonna come down. It's gonna come down to the very end of day two. Mm -hmm. Like unless something on their side or our side just you know unimaginable would happen. Yeah. It's there's so much points from both of our teams in so many events. It's almost one of those things. Like it's is it gonna come down to the end of day two, and when the smoke clears, we'll I'll be staring there. at the points and, <laughs> yeah. and, and see who's there. But uh, yeah. that's just kind of how it's looking right now. Yeah, sure. one spot. Um, Talked a lot about the field and the, some of the distance guys, but um, the sprinters, Hunter Patterson, yeah. uh, the yeah. freshman in his first, you know. He's going to hate I say this. I call him track baby. <laughs> yeah, he is. He'll ask questions. I'm like, yeah. it's because you're a track baby. <laughs> like, yeah. you've just never done this before, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like after the 200, you know, my legs are numb. I'm like, oh, well, you've never done any of this before. <laughs> so, obviously, it's okay because every time you run it, you're still breaking the record, right? Yeah, um, and, and that's that's another area, right? Like Ethan Seacrest and Elliot Omar have kind of been our back backups before Hunter got here, and, and uh, elian has been dinged up on his hamstring, and Ethan graduated, and uh, uh, Hunter coming in and as fast as he is uh, is an, another area that we didn't have very much scoring opportunity. Yeah. Um, and uh, now we have a lot of scoring opportunity. Yeah, he's right up there the near top. the top, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, as you see with the – like the 60 – you know, there's just it's six eight three, six eight four, six eight five. It's it's essentially how how well you, it's how it's how your reaction time is out of the block to the gun, and do you lean at the line? I mean, yeah. it's fractions of seconds. They beat it by a hundredth, I believe, yeah. right? Last time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just it's one of those events that you need the FAT system because with your eyeballs, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Like you just they all look like they came across at the same time. Like the fastest guys, like you're like, you could have got <laughs> fifth or first. I have no idea. Yeah. Like with my eyeballs, they're not that good. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, um, you know, Hunter's been carrying the guy's side on the sprint side, and then on the women, there's, there's quite a few of them. Um, you know, Haley is our, is our veteran at it. Uh, Maggie, uh, coming from Wesleyan, um, mm -hmm. very good, and she's one of the top 400 girls. Um, Sierra Lanham just broke our 200 school record. Right. That, yeah. that Maggie, and those are kind of like, yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll see who has it at the end of this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to change that one again. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, Madison Cadle is going, and Abby Stackpole, so um, – yeah, there's, is, I, you know, I know I talked about them in the preview, but, um, you know, there's just that. And it's, it's going to be very helpful for us. The 60 is an interesting event. Some people like it, some people hate it, because <laughs> it's just not enough time to really, if you have really good acceleration, yeah. um, you can kind of get away with it, where, like, sprinters really look at the 100 to see who's the best sprinter. Mm -hmm. So, like, outdoor is really where you, you lean on the sprinters and say, okay, like, because, I mean, on a smaller track, even though it's only 100 meters less, like, the turns are, are tight. And so for a 200-meter runner, you know, manipulating a turn is, is, is tough, and it's something you have to practice a lot of. Outdoor, you're used to it because you were in high school and you've, you've run it, right? And I think that's something like Hunter will appreciate going up to 100 meters and then the 200, the turn's not as tight, okay. so you don't yeah. have to manipulate it as much. So that, that's just a change in times, and that's why you always see outdoor 200s way faster than indoor, you know, because yeah, it's just not as many turns. Turn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and, and it's something they're familiar with. Like a lot of these freshmen have never run indoor before. A lot of these freshmen – that have done well or are developing. Um, this is our first indoor season ever. And before you're good, you need to be experienced. And uh, even though, like, Hunter is good, he's very unexperienced. He just still has a lot to learn. He, yeah, he, learns, yeah. he learns every week. Right, yeah. But he's unbelievably inexperienced for how good he is. It's, it's, it's funny talking to him about it. Um, <laughs> like, when he talks, he, just, he gets so tired, and you're just like <laughs> – you everyone else is like, oh, we've been doing this forever. You're like, oh, this is his mm. first time. So, um, yeah, so, no, those, those groups uh, will be taking some points for us as well. Like I, like I said, that's a good thing on both sides. There's not a, there's not an event 
on any of the sides that we don't have point scores. So right. that's which way, to be top three, it's in our sport, that's what you have to have. Yeah, well, it should be an exciting weekend, Coach. Uh, yes. Best of luck to you, both teams. Thank um, you. For everyone out there, tune in. There will be a live stream, live results. You can find all the links on HilltopperSports.com. Um, best of luck to the Hilltoppers this weekend. I'm Jacob Davey, joined by Coach Simpson. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Danny Irwin. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration.